Hank Davis opening his mouth, you know, everybody talking. Eddie's stirring some stuff up. You've sparred with Tank before. How did that go? <laughs> it was good work, you know. Uh, sparring is sparring. It was a while ago. Uh, I think he's improved since then. I improved. I improved as well. Which is the tougher fight for you, Lomachenko, Tank Davis, or Lopez? I say Tank. I say Tank. 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 What's good with your fam fam? Welcome to Big Faces Worldwide where we talking nothing but this boxing man. Hey listen man, first off I want to welcome everybody to the channel and if you're new here, I need you to be here. So think about hitting that subscribe button as we stay knee deep into this boxing conversation. <laughs> Uh, I want to start with Devin Haney and Javante Tank Davis. Um, for those of you who don't know, these two fighters have been going back and forth on Twitter. Um, Javante Davis, uh, you know, Mayweather Promotions had a fight um, last Friday um, in Las Vegas. And there was a lot of media there. Tank had a press conference with Steven Espinoza, Leonard Ellerby, and Badu Jack for their upcoming fight in Atlanta in December. Um, and one of the, the questions that, that Tank was asked was about the franchise title and about Devin Haney being elevated to, to, to full champion. Um, Tank, you know, he, um, he basically said Devin Haney is not a real champion. Devin Haney did not win the title like he did. You know, I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, but, you know, word got back to Devin Haney and Devin Haney responded by saying, listen, after this fight I got next week, me and you can get it on. You're the mandatory for this title. Let's let's get it on. Let's get this work. You know, basically, that's what he was saying, man. Um, now, Tank and Haney, they got history. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, um, you know, he was aggressively seeking to sign Haney uh, when Haney first jumped on the scene. And, um, you know, he was spending a whole lot of time at the Mayweather gym. Um, Floyd Sr. Was, was training him. And, um, you know, Tank was there and there were a lot of sparring stories, sparring rumors between the two. Um, now, Mayweather Sr. says that, you know, Devin, Devin got the best of Tank in those, you know, in, 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 in those sparring sessions. Other people said, you know, say Tank got the best, you know what I'm saying? But regardless, like you heard at the beginning of the video, Devin Haney said that was years ago. Both fighters have gotten better since then, and um, you know, no telling, no telling how the fight will play out these days. You know what I'm saying? But um, I think it's an interesting fight, man. You know, Tank takes a lot of flack, man, for uh, uh, the things that he say on Twitter, man. Everybody's calling him a Twitter warrior, the Twitter champion. You know what I'm saying? Because basically, man, Tank just says anything that comes to his mind. Well, he tweets anything that comes to his mind. And that rubs a lot of fight fans the wrong way. Um, you know, me, if you follow my channel, you know that I am a huge Javante Tank Davis fan. But, you know, I do not agree with some of the things that he does on Twitter. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh he calls people out, you know, he, he, he threatens people, you know, he did, just does a lot of uh, messy things on Twitter, if you will, you know what I'm saying, but um, the fight between him and Haney is one that I would love to see, man, um, uh, Eddie Hearn, you know, Eddie Hearn uh, was talking to Javante, I mean, talking to Devin Haney, and he asked him, you know, about uh, Javante Davis, Vasil Lomachenko, and Teofimo Lopez, you know what I'm saying? And he asked which one out of the three would be the hardest fight. Devin Haney took a couple seconds to think about it, and he declared Tank. Tank would be the hardest to fight um, out of the three, man. And um, I believe he's right. I believe he's right, man. I think Tank is very explosive. I think Tank has underrated boxing skills. Um, I think he has underrated boxing IQ, and it's mainly because of um, the lack of competition, man. We have not seen Tank in there with the, with the elite, you know what I'm saying, with the best of the best. And the way that Leonard Ellerby and, 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 and Mayweather Promotions are going around praising Tank, um, you know, a lot of fight fans look at it as premature, you know what I'm saying? You know, basically saying, how can you put this guy on this pedestal when he has not fought? 
anyone to 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 earn his spot. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, there's a thing called the eye test, man, where you can look at a fighter and you know a fighter is special. You know the fighter has 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 something that you know uh, you haven't seen, you haven't quite seen um, before or in a long time, man. And I think Javante Davis fits in that category, man. Of you know, he can. I, I believe he can be great. You know what I'm saying? But like the rest of the fight fans, I demand that Tank fight better competition he needs to prove his worth he needs to show everybody that he is what they say he is man and um you know fighting your yorkist gamboa you know what i'm saying gamboa is not the guy to uh to make your bones on you know although i do think it is a, a good solid test for tank it will be you know in my opinion the um the best fighter on Tank's resume, you know what I'm saying? Um, Gamboa is definitely over the hill. He's definitely seen better days, but um, Gamboa still pre presents, a, a, you know, some threats, man. He's still fast. He still can punch, and he's um, athletic, man. You know, we haven't seen Javante Davis in with an athletic fighter, a, a guy that's just as fast and explosive as him, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be interesting to see how Tank handles Gamboa, but I'm looking forward to that fight um and should he get past that fight you know what i'm saying hopefully i'm praying that we get to see tank davis in there with devin haney you know what i'm saying he is the mandatory for that title you know so you know the fight will be ordered as long as he keeps his spot and um you know some some hopefully somewhere in 2020 they get busy you know what I'm saying? They get busy. And I think that those two, you know, with no disrespect to Teofimo, no disrespect to Lomachenko, I just think, in my opinion, that Javante Davis and um, Devin Haney are the two um, guys to beat at 135. You know, I think Lomachenko, although he's very skilled, very um, talented and a great fighter, um, in my opinion, you know, over the last couple of fights, I see a little decline. You know what I'm saying? He's not as explosive. He's not as vicious and violent as he was a couple of years ago. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I just think that, you know, these younger guys got more vigor and more to offer than, than um, Lomachenko, man. I think that youth will prevail you know what I'm saying? Should either of those 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 young young guys get in there with, with Lomachenko, man? Um, you know, uh Tiafimo. You know, Tiafimo had the opportunity to fight for the the WBC. I don't know if you remember a couple earlier this year, man, uh the WBC Mauricio Suleiman. Um, he wanted to do like a tournament, you know what I mean? A little tournament um, to afford a WBC uh, title, you know what I'm saying? Uh, which would was going to be Tiafimo and uh, Javier Fortuna, um, Devin Haney and Zor Abdulov. And um, who was the other two? Luke Campbell and uh, I forget who the other guy was, man. But Tiafimo... You know, he decided to go the IBF route, you know what I'm saying? Because he thought, you know, that would be the easier road to the championship, man. And um, he just knew that he was going to be able to get that Lomachenko fight. Um, he knew that Lomachenko was going to get that WBC belt. And he knew that he was going to get that fight. He just knew it in his mind, man. You go, I was watching the interviews and he was just so sure of, you know, whatever top rank was feeding him, man. You know what I'm saying? He really believed that, you know, he was he was going to get he was going to get it man you know what i'm saying and um tiafimo had a lot of wind in his sails and you know it seemed like the wind has stopped blowing man you know what i'm saying you really don't hear nothing uh about tiafimo no more you know what i mean he has um he has been quiet he has been under the radar he got a fight coming up with richard comey and i think will be a tough fight for him this will tell us uh, whether or not Tiafimo is the real deal or not, man. Tiafimo, like Javante Davis, he passes the eye test, man. He, you know what I'm saying? It looks like he got the goods. It looks like he's one of those fighters who, uh, you know, only come around, ever, you know, once once every 10, 15 years, man. But his last his last fight against the uh, tall Japanese fighter, um, I, I cannot remember his name. But, you know, he faced a little adversity, man. And I think that was a, a blow to his confidence, man. He did not, you know, he just seen himself going in there and, and steamrolling everybody. And when he ran up against this tall rangy Japanese fighter man um and things didn't go as 
quite the way that he thought they would go, man. I think that was a, 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 a blow a blow to his ego, man, and, you know, kind of humbled him a little bit, man, and, and we haven't heard too much from Tiafimo. I know he was having problems with his uh, – his his family, you know, they didn't approve of the the woman he decided to marry, and um, you know he wasn't sure if he was going to fight Kome until you know he got his family situation um, straightened out. You know what I'm saying? But um, the fight's on, the fight's scheduled, and uh, will be happening in in December. So I'm looking forward to that matchup, man. 135 is is, is it got some smoke up there, man. Um, Gary Russell Jr. I just seen the interview with with him. And he says he's moving up to 135. He said he's going to, he's going to uh, uh, skip 130 and going straight to 135, man. And um, I just don't – I don't know if Gary Russell got the frame to go to 135. You know what I'm saying? He's a little guy, man. He was, you know uh, – small for 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 126 it seemed like you know that was the perfect weight for him man but gary russell cannot cannot seem to find um the right opponents at 126 and he knows all the guys that he won the fight is at 135 the vasily lomachenko's the javante tank davis's the uh you know uh devin haney's you know what i'm saying but I am curious to see how this 135-pound division unfolds in 2020. Um, who will come out on top? Who will be the one out the group to be the first to take a L? You know what I mean? Um, we're going to see. We're going to see. But listen, man, I appreciate y'all tuning in, man. You can catch me on social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, at Big Faces Worldwide, all one word. But in the meantime and in between time, stay blessed, fam. And keep on supporting this sport that we love called boxing. Peace. I'll holler back.